Hey and welcome to today's jazz guitar lesson. This is a bit of a follow-up lesson. A little while ago I did a couple of lessons on the Dizzy Gillespie tune, Night in Tunisia, where I went through the chords and the harmony, but I didn't do a, a soloing lesson. One of my viewers said, oh, would you get around to doing that? So I thought, do you know what? It's a really fun tune to play over. So what we're gonna do today is take a look at the A section. And we're gonna do this in three stages. So let's get on to stage one. So stage one is about identifying what arpeggios or scales you could use over this. So we're gonna look at just the A section. Let's just remind ourselves of the chords. So we got E flat seven, D minor seven. Do that a few times. Then we go E minor seven flat five, A seven, D minor. So that's our that's our, our chords for that that A section. Make sure you know it, memorize it, you don't want to chart. Be able to, you know, play that and hear the melody against it in your head. You know, listen to the tune a lot, internalize the changes. Let's first off think about scales that we could use. So we've got this E flat seven. So what do we normally use over dominant chords? We'd normally use as a basic thing a mixed lydian like this. And that's a scale vanilla, vanilla scale of choice for a dominant, right? Sounds the sound of that chord. Now really this E flat seven is functioning like a tritone and if you need to get your head around that then I'll put a link in the description to my videos on the tritone but a good scale choice for a tritone is Lydian dominant which is this. Why is it called Lydian dominant? Well a Lydian scale is this which is like a major scale with a raised fourth sharp four. So if we had Lydian dominant we're gonna just have a flat seven. We're gonna change that, we're gonna lower the seventh, that D, and have there, that note. So it's like a combination, if you like, of uh, Lydian and Mixolydian. Let's just listen to that. Let me sustain an E flat chord and just let's just hear that against it. Here it is, Lydian dominant. Second, major third, that sharp four, which sounds pretty interesting. But then, you know, you listen to the start of that A section, this E flat is interesting. So, you know, it's good to use something over it. There's like, oh yeah. There's the five, the six, the flat seven, that's root. We've got our chord tones in there. E flat, G, B flat, D flat. That's nice always important to find your chord tones in your scales. So we've got there the scale, then the chord tone, E flat, G, B flat, D flat. We can make it an E flat nine, let's put an F, maybe on the top. Feeling a little bit crazy, we could make an E flat nine sharp 11, and that would give us the Lydian sound as well. That's just finding what's sort of packed in within it. Thing, really important thing to do. Um, you know, you're practicing that scale. Don't just start from there. Practice it down. Start on the chord tones. Start from a G. From a B flat. From a flat seven. Obviously, you can extend outside the octave as I just did there. You know. Find the, as I said, find the chord tones, just the basic ones. Like if you find E flat, root, third, fifth, seven, then go try three, five, seven, one, then five, seven, three, no, five, seven, one, three, put that together, and then seven, one, three, five. So it's playing the chord tones but starting from each note of the, the chord and going up through the arpeggio. One, three, five, seven, three, five, seven, one, and so on. Like, uh, sorry, I'll do it slow. Good thing to be able to do, because it practices not always starting from E flat. So you practice your arpeggios and you see E flat seven, it's like, ah, oh, I've got to start on E flat. No, you can start from any note of the chord and you need to train your ear and your fingers to do that too. So that's your E flat seven. My, my choice would be 
E flat leading and dominant, but you know, find your chord tones in there too. So for the D minor, D minor seven, we've got a couple choices. Really depends on, again, what sound you want to go after. But just, you know, basic things, we could hit, up, hit it up with a, a D minor pentatonic. That's going to be fine and nice and simple. So if I went E flat Lydian, D minor pentatonic. That's, you know, I'm going to be able to create things with that. Uh, would work, would work well. Step up from that, D, D blues, D minor blues. Let's have E flat Lydian, I'll go backwards, D blues. I'm just running scales like that, so a good thing to do just to get the sound in your head over chords is cool too. So also D minor pentatonic, D blues, tasty sounds that we could use. Um, but those those blues scales, pentatonic obviously five notes, the blues scale six notes. In terms of seven note scales, there's a few options we could go for. The natural minor scale. Bit of a vanilla choice, but it works, so that would give us E flat Lydian dominant to D minor. That was up E flat Lydian dominant down the uh, D natural minor. If we wanted to push the sound a little bit more, because it's quite an exotic sounding tune, let's go Dorian. So that's just the same as that last scale, but we just raised instead of. That we're going to go. So you raise the sixth, the semitone, the cat, and that's the real essence of Dorian. See what that sounds like. So E flat Lydian dominant, D Dorian. When you get that note, it sounds interesting. So that's that's a nice option. Another one is also the harmonic minor, which is the, um, the same as the natural minor, but just with a raised seventh. So a bit more maybe Eastern or exotic. With that C sharp leading into the D. Uh, so E flat leading dominant. That was down the harmonic minor. Let's go down leading dominant. Uh, Here, there's a, a, a soundscape there worth you know if you don't know those scales it's worth kind of practicing and maybe singing them um you know just play a d minor chord get just a static d minor chord back in track or like using the freeze or your looper and just go right what, what can i create with d minor pentatonic let's hear some of those against a, a d minor so pentatonic I find it a bit bland. D Dorian. I dwell on that note because that's the note that makes it Dorian. The the B. Try and create phrases, melodies. Two, three, four. I know it's the other one, wasn't it? That's the tenth note. What this scale gives you is three points where there's a semitone interval. D to C sharp, B flat to A, F to E, which is all interesting. The points in scales which are most interesting always is where there's a semitone interval and worth exploiting when you're playing. Obviously you've got arpeggios within all of those, um, but you know you need to be able to sound D minor. DFA, just putting the octave again on the top. D minor seven, that's DFA C. D, and what about D minor nine? DFA C E. It's nice. That's adding the eleventh on top, the G. Uh, D 
to D minor six. So B, so D, F, A, B. Uh, all nice sounds we can go for. Now, obviously the progression's going E flat seven, we've got our E flat options, D minor seven, we've got our D minor options, and then we get this quick two, five, one, uh, minor two, five, one. Now, we could get like super detailed and be like, right, go for this over the minor seven flat five, this over the dominant. Um, yeah, could get quite complicated. I mean, it might already be complicated enough as it is what we've just done with two chords, but I think, you know, the thing really here, playing, you know, obviously being able to solo over the whole form and, and the standard is, is your ultimate aim. But I think, you know, if you can just play really well between E flat and D minor, that's going to help you in other tunes, right? And it's, it's it, you just get really competent at that. Um, and that's why this, this, these next three chords, I'm just going to say, right, blanket, just use D harmonic minor. So use that one that we used over the D minor and it will work fine. So that was stage one, which is find the harmony, find your ways to outline those chords. Now, you're not going to turn that into a solo straight away. You need to get that harmony into your head. You need to get those things down on the fretboard, physically, mentally, the sound of it into your ears um, before you can really do stuff with it. So stage two, we're going to look at how do you then you know, not have, say, Lydia and then a D minor choice. And it's like to, to get it into flow. Because when I was doing it, I was like, right, E flat, Lydia and dominant. And then D, say, minor, pentatonic. Then I jumped there for the D minor pentatonic, which it does just sound like, okay, I've got my E flat idea, I've got my D minor idea. So how do we get things to, to flow a bit better? So this is where I think you have to find what I call the pools which is the point of transition between two chords. It's finding the links between them. So if you finish on an E flat, where's the nearest note that works for D minor, for instance? So if we, yeah, if I, say if I played the Lydian dominant all the way up, I've landed here. So I've got two options here, I think. Closest option is beneath me, semitone down, I've got a D. So let's go. And now then, what, I need to then think, well, what can I do with that D? What, well, really, I should be thinking, what can I hear? And I feel like I want to go... Uh, which is up Lydian dominant. I'm on the D, then I went F, A, C, B, um, which was a D minor 7 arpeggio with a 6 chucked on the top. Uh, if I went up that again... The other place I could go, I could go up a semitone to an E, which is the ninth of D. So, sorry. And then into a, a D minor idea. So just think, you know, whatever note you finish on on the E flat, you've got the option of potentially either staying on the note you're on, because it might work for D, or it might sound interesting against the D, going down, maybe a semitone or a tone to a note that works well for the D, or going up again, a semitone or a tone. Or maybe further. You can obviously make, there's nothing to say you can't make bigger leaps. I just prefer making efficient moves. I think it, it flows nicely then. What I refer to as pulls are really like tension and release points, I think. So it's kind of like, um, let's say, the, the links between the chords. And I, I call it a pull because I, I feel when I'm playing, I feel pulled, almost compelled to go to these notes. I can hear them. I can feel that they kind of want to go there. So let's think about if you finish on... Like say, the note E flat, you could go down to a D for the D minor, you could go up to an E, you also could go up to an F as well. Uh, those are kind of good harmonic pulls. If I finished on, let's finish, just let's think about it systematically, so that would be finishing on the root of an E flat 7 chord. If we finished on the, um, the third, then the nearest note of the D minor is either A there, so if I had an idea, there it is. Da, 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 da. Now the D minor is coming and I'm landing on an A and I can then, I could be in, you know, any of those D minor options. Uh, let's finish on um, the B flat. Again, there, oh, can go down to the A. Feels like a... I suppose to a C as well, but it's it's finding those those links between them. You know, if I took the arpeggio 
let's try to do E flat seven arpeggio. Puts me on a D flat. I could go up to a D. Then that gives me the option of, you know, I say accessing either a D minor type scale or arpeggio. Let's just do an arpeggio for now. So then let's go D, F, A, C. Uh, if we go do that again, that's landing E flat seven. Landing on the D flat, I could go down to the C. There we are. And some things, you know, some things I find myself doing either with chord tones or with a, with a scale is just out of time. Say, take that E flat leading dominant, and I might just finish somewhere, um, and then make sure I go to the nearest note of the next scale, which requires you, right, to know. The scale well, note by note. You know, if you want to know, E flat leading dominant is you know E flat F G A B flat C uh, D flat back to E flat. You need to then know if you say using uh, don't know D Dorian that it's D E F G A B C D. You need to be able to find it on there. You need to be able to to hear it. But if I I don't know uh, say there that puts me on a D flat. D and I could go up a semitone to D and then I'm like well I could go down my D Dorian so I could go I'm trying to do like eighth note runs um, with that as well that was F E flat then back up the Lydian dominant then down a D Dorian uh, let's do it another way uh, Do that. Now that is um, E flat leading dominant starting on B flat, going down to the root and then back up, just playing eight notes, which places me on an A, which is a note in D minor, so I could stay on it. Yeah, finding different ways of, of practicing this. So. You know, there's a lot of work that goes into getting these kind of things down in on the fretboard, in your head, internalised sound-wise, but it, it really does lead to being able to create nice lines which flow between the chords well. Stage one was be clear about the way you're going to outline the harmony. Stage two was to find the pulls, so find the the links between the chords. So if you finish on if you finish on a F on a E flat chord, where are you going to go for a D minor chord, for instance? You could stay on F because F's a chord tone of D minor. Don't know, you could go down to an E, the ninth, you could go down to a D, it's just up to a G, well, you know, which is a fourth, obviously, an interesting note to start on, but it's just, you know, getting this, all this stuff, it, you know, understood intellectually, but also musically. Stage three is obviously application, and you've got to get to that stage where you can put a backing track on, you can play with someone else, and you can try this stuff out. So let's, let me put my loop on, and I'll just show you some things you could do at this point. Here's my backing track. So what I'm going to do first off is just find some of those pulls. Let this just get around again. I'm going to start on the note E flat and then find the nearest note for D. So E flat, down to a D, back to the E flat, up to an E, why not? So that again. Then D harmonic minor. D flat, up to D. D flat, up to C, down to C, sorry. Let's do B flat down to an A, these are the pulls, and then harmonic. Now, scale maybe. Lydian dominant. Arpeggio. ways you can explore this but it's just that kind of you know do things slowly at first and you know you might just sit there and go E flat or sustain the sound of that somehow and practice but how are you gonna play over that chord then work out how you're gonna play over D minor then try and work out how you're gonna bridge the gap because you don't want to play stuff which is just here's E flat then here's D minor you want to as I said find the links between the chords that's so connect chord tones connect scale notes things then flow nicely. And if at the minute my saying, you know, find the pause might seem a bit vague, 
you know when you practice it, you'll start to feel them and, and, and hear them and, and want to want to do them links to the resources pdfs in the description if you want to say thank you for today's lesson there's a link to my buy me a coffee also uh, don't forget if you missed out on the previous lessons i did on night in tunisia uh, check those out where i went through the chords and the harmony and everything so i'll put those on the screen uh, in case you missed those if you're new here jazz guitar lessons every wednesday and saturday please consider subscribing leave me a comment please hit that like button it really helps boost um, how videos get pushed out to other people so that's been much appreciated Thanks so much for tuning in. Till next time, you take care.